Continuing on with hybridization, we're going to look at sp3 hybridization in a tetrahedral molecule. So this molecule is going to be methane, CH4. So for our methane, we're going to have a six electrons from the carbon, six plus, and that is going to give us 1s, 2s, and 2p orbitals. And we have four hydrogens. Each of them gives us one electron and uh, 1s orbital each. So that's for a total of 10 electrons in the molecule. We can see in our diagram here how those are arranged relative to the axes which we have defined, with the PZ, PY, and PX orbitals, and each hydrogen is at its appropriate location in the tetrahedron. So it's kind of hard to see from this type of perspective. You need some type of depth perspective to see where all these hydrogens really are. So that's why I've drawn this cube over here. If you ever need to draw a tetrahedron, it's helpful to see where things are on a cube. So what you can do is you draw a cube and then you put one of the hydrogens on one of the corners and then the other three are connected down the face diagonals of the cube. So <clears throat> on any side of the cube, any particular square you choose, there are going to be two hydrogens connected by a diagonal. And then our uh, carbon is located on a body diagonal in the middle of the cube. So all four hydrogens are equidistant and are equidistant from uh, the center, which is the carbon, and they're equidistant from each other as well, forming a perfect tetrahedron. Okay, so what are we going to use for these orbitals? Well, in this case, unlike our previous two examples, the overlap integral of the hydrogen 1s orbital with any given 2p orbital of the carbon, 2p where i is x, y, or z, is not equal to zero. So the each hydrogen has some non-zero amount of overlap with all three of these p orbitals that we've shown here. So it's really just the 1s of the carbon, which is an occupied core orbital, which is going to have two electrons in the core there, which is not going to interact in bonding. And the other eight electrons are going to form four bonding orbitals. So we're going to have the 2s, 2px, 2py, 2pz, and the four 1s orbitals are all going to be interacting in order to form our bonding. But we want to take the 2s, 2px, 2py, and 2pz of the carbon to form our hybrid orbitals, which are going to be sp3 hybrid orbitals, as we have combined 1s orbital and 3p orbitals to get them. Okay, so let's write out what our orbitals are going to be. So we have psi sp3 1, and that's going to be 1 through 4 that we're going to have, sp3 2, sp3 3, and sp3 number 4. Okay, so these are all going to be uh, for the varying coefficients on 2s and the 3 2ps, as I said. To normalize them, they're all going to have the same normalization constant, 1 over square root of 4, which, yes, that is 1 half, but to emphasize the fact that uh, we have the equal con we're going to have equal contributions from each of the orbitals, I'm throwing on the uh, 1 over square root of 4 there. Because once we square this, it's basically each orbital is 1 fourth contribution from each of these orbitals, since they're going to be equally weighted here. So our first one, pretty simple, 2s plus 2px plus 2py plus 2pz. So notice those are all positive. Those are all in equal contributions. <clears throat> so what we have is it's going to go towards the plus towards the plus x direction, towards the plus y direction, towards the plus z direction. That's this hydrogen number here. So if we wanted to, we could just label this as hydrogen uh, number one there. Number one. Okay, and our next one, 2s minus 2px minus 2py plus 2pz. 
Again, the, it's an equal weight of the square root of one fourth on all of them. So it's one quarter character of each of these orbitals. So start at the origin, we go minus x, we go minus y, and we go plus z. So that leads us over here down to this corner of our cube. So this is hydrogen number two for, it's gonna be interacting with sp3 orbital number two. Okay, and then for number three, we have 2s plus 2px minus 2py minus 2pz. Okay, where is that at? So we go plus x, go minus y, and we go minus z, which is this one over here in the back. So that's that, so we'll label that as number three. And our final orbital is going to be the only possible combination, which is both normalized and orthogonal to all these three, which is 2s minus 2px plus 2py minus 2pz. Okay, and let's check if this is the correct one over here. Okay, so we're going to go on minus x. We're going to go plus y and minus z, and that leads us in the correct direction there. So that gives us hydrogen number four, which will interact with sp3 orbital number four. So those four orbitals are going to point towards the four corners of the tetrahedron. That's really hard to draw in a 2D uh, space without making it a big mess of itself. So I'll leave that up to the imagination. Uh, beyond what the, draw, the drawing that I have here. And the important point to note, though, is that those four orbitals do, through their linear combinations, point towards the four corners of the tetrahedron uh, perfectly. So all corners of the tetrahedra are 109.5 degrees away from each other if we form the angle from its vector from the carbon to the hydrogen and then to the next hydrogen. So all six of these combinations of two of them are 109 degrees apart. Okay, and just like before, we'll have situations where once it interacts with the 1s orbital of the uh, hydrogen, which it is pointing towards with that sp3, you can have positive and negative linear combinations of those two. So if you have positive, leading to net overlap, net buildup of density between the atoms. Then you get a bonding orbital and the negative linear combination where you get a depletion of density between these two and you build up a node between uh, the hydrogen and the carbon is going to be anti-bonding. Okay, and as, I, as was the case for sp and for sp2, if you compute the overlap integral between all of these, uh, any of these uh, pairs of combinations here, if you do psi sp3i, where i is 1 through 4, and psi sp3j, that integral, again, of the overlap is delta ij, so they are both normalized and orthogonal. They are orthonormal, being the Kronecker delta here. And what is their percent p character and percent s character? Well, we have square root of one fourth, which squared is one fourth. One fourth is the square coefficient on all four of these. So on all four of them, you have uh, one s is a quarter, and then a quarter on each of these adds up to three quarters. So our sp3 orbitals are indeed. 25% s and 75, not 25, 75% p, as would be implied by the combination sp3, where it's one three parts p for every one part s.